goes way, way back, as I can personally attest, uh, um, both in terms of, his, of, the, um, of the accomplishments of his faith in Alanyane Gittin, in which I was often honored to serve as the shliach, um, and also as the impetus behind the founding, what do you call them? I forget what you call them, the, the wedding? All oh, right. I one of the an early group to promote the promotion of the uh, uh, yeah, both of which we've both forgotten the acronym by now. <laughs> uh, but you know, present present at the uh, present present at the creation, also through many years of discussions and the Anyan program um, at YU and, and thereafter. Um, my doctor just finished giving a, giving a wonderful two and a half hour share to the uh, to the fellows of the Center of the Midrash. So we're grateful that he's still able. Uh, able to be with us tonight. I want to say a word about the topic tonight, which I'll introduce to you, is the Tzvat Geta 5774, um, but I want to have a brief brief talk about the nature of, of Pesach and Agudot. There's a lot of, leg legitimately, there's a lot of public controversy and criticism about whether the rabbinate is active enough and uh, creative enough in solving Agudot issues, although the existence of the prenuptial agreement is in some ways a, uh, some ways a, resp a response to that, which really um, is a rabbinically initiated phenomenon who's, um, who's getting more and more successful, whose success really depends on lay support. Right? The variable has really been lay support, not so much rabbinic support. Um, but, one of the issue, but one of the things that really has to happen is that when a Beit Din or a Rav um, in fact displays exactly the courage and creativity that one is called for, they need to be supported. At the same time, one can't support them indiscriminately. Right, right. If you think if you think that um, somebody went too far, so you have to criticize them. That's a very fine balance. You know, on the one hand, recognizing the necessity that if somebody does something which is bold and um, bold and productive, that you can't just leave them twisting in the wind um, because it's likely they'll get attacked. At the same time, you can't say I support them just because they're bold and creative, because that will make you hostage to it. Right? To anybody who pushes whatever whatever idea they want. Uh, it seems to me, therefore, that the community really needs to pay attention to what has happened in Svat. It was really, a, um, really a very, a very bold, creative stock that I think most of us would acknowledge reaches uh, ending the right result in terms of heteroguna. At the same time, they have to look at the arguments with great precision and make sure that you're supporting something that deserves to be supported. My, my own take, which Rajaf can agree with or not, to go on is that when there is a heteroguna and you're pretty sure that there should be a heter. The only question is whether the grounds that have been adduced are sufficient or not. So the proper reaction really is, if you disagree with the grounds, is to offer your own better grounds um, to uh, for support, or at the very least to say, I don't know that these grounds are sufficient. I look forward to seeing, I right, encourage people to come up with better grounds rather than spending one's time trying to tear down the heter, uh, which seems to me to have no productive purpose at all if your whole goal is just to attack and leave the woman bound for, um, which, which often, I think everyone agrees, is not the right result. Um, so this is a case, this is a case that, is, that has um, received some notoriety in the press, but I don't think has reached the awareness of the, of the broader community at all. And I'm hoping that, in addition, that tonight we'll have a, a, you know, a, um, a, detail, a detailed, sophistic, sophisticated, nuanced, careful analysis of the issues, but also that we'll just bring it to people's attention. Um, because if it turns out and the, the outcome of this is something that should be supported, um, so we really need to figure out ways in which we can make sure that when rabbis, in fact, do the right thing, that, um, that, that they feel um, that their effort and their instincts are validated, and that therefore we can encourage more of it. Um, okay, and with that, I'll turn it over to that. Thank you very much, Rabbi Kleiber. Thank you so much for, for coming, and uh, thank the, uh, especially to the uh, Southern Base Medish fellows who've uh, been through a two and a half hour share with me and still came back to, uh, for another share. Uh, call a couple. Okay. Um, this, uh, what we're going to be speaking about tonight, just to give a little mushal, just to help you uh, understand. Um, you know, when you watch uh, La Havdil, you know, you watch a sports, a sports game, you know, you hey, there's a certain sense of, uh, you know, who you're rooting for and who, you, who you're cheering on is a certain emotional investment. Now, certainly in this, uh, in this situation, you're rooting for the Basin of Tzvat, who has found a very creative uh, means to resolve an Aguna problem 
that was in their midst. And we're certainly be, we're going to be rooting for them, but we're going to be uh, going back and forth and back and forth. We're going to try to go through uh, some of the sources that are relevant. It was quite a, uh, a tshuva that uh, the head of the Tzfat Beitun was. Anybody see? Anybody know how long he wrote? He wrote a piece 93 pages long. And I went through it twice. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it, was a little, it took a long time. You know? And, um, and, and I, I try to look up most of the tshuva that he, quote, that, he, that he quoted, just to see, well, is he quoting? Is he quoting, giving the whole story? So this, uh, what I'm presenting tonight, represents uh, a lot of effort being put into uh, to trying to really understand something that offhand seems to be very, very shocking, and we'll see in a minute what, I, what I'm saying. All right, first of all, what's the case? The case was uh, the situation in, uh, in, the, in the Tzfat area. Where a, hus- where a husband had been involved, unfortunately, seven years ago in a terrible motorcycle accident. He became in a PBS, permanent vegetative state, and no improvement, nothing, just remained the same, just sustained by life support in, uh, in the hospital, and that's it. You can't communicate with him. And the base, did it, and then the wife came, fused this race six, five, six, seven years down the line, and she's coming and she asks the basin, you know, is there some basis in which she can remarry? And finally, the basin, after meeting with the husband and giving really a due process, they didn't rush into, into a decision, they gave due process to, to, uh, to the situation, they visited the, uh, the, the gentleman more than once, after after a uh, number a uh, couple of months uh, intervals between between the between the visits, and after they made a decision, wrote a ninety three page uh, after if they met after the visits they wrote a ninety three page decision. And the process certainly was a fair process. They appointed, as we'll talk about, a, a some an executor, someone that would be a lawyer who would represent the interests of the man also, just to make sure it's a fair process. It wasn't railroaded, so the process was done very, very well. But let's see why the uh, the decision in which the based in basically granted a get on behalf of this husband, even though the husband didn't authorize the writing of the get. What is the basis for it? What was the logic? Let's, uh, let's begin. Now, first of all, it seems utterly shocking that we can have this concept that the basin could write a get on behalf of a husband without, with a husband being totally inactive, totally in case, some, someone that you cannot communicate with at all. Let's take a look at the first three sources in the handout. Everybody have a handout? Okay. Uh, the uh, source number one is as follows. Okay, Misha Ochso Kurkodikos. So the word, it's a funny word, the, uh, it's a Greek word, the, uh, somebody became uh, psychologically very ill, so to the point that he's no longer mentally competent. But Amar Kisru get and he ordered the writing of a get. Of, of, of a get. So it's invalid. There's nothing, there's, there's no validity to anything that, that they show that this person, who's halakhli incompetent, that he, there's, no, there's no validity to what he did. All right? And uh, let's continue on with this Mishnah. What happens to, let's go to the uh, middle of the, of, of the next line. Nishta take. What if he was silenced? He came, became mute. He can't speak. So is there some way to have to, that, that the, the wife can get a get? Well, you'll see, you, this is what you do. You ask him, Nichtov lecha, get lishcha. Should we write a get for your wife? And if he gives, here Kim Rosh He gives a, uh, shakes his head. You have to make sure that he's, still, that he's mentally competent, that he understands your question. Right? If you ask him, uh, let's say on a day like today, uh, let's go out and let's have a snowball fight. And uh, you ask him, you know, would you enjoy uh, a, a snowball fight now? You know, and, and he says, obviously, he's just shaking his head. Yes, you have no idea what you're, what you're saying. So you have to make sure that he's, that he's mentally competent. But basically, this mission seems to say pretty clearly that he has to be, if he's, if he's not mentally confident, that's it. He's, he's, uh, he's gone. There's nothing, uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's out of the box. Let's go, he's, he's out of the game. He can't be, uh, he, can't, uh, he can't write again for his uh, wife. Number two, take a look at this mission. This mission tells us, They ask the husband, Should we, can, can we write again for your, for your wife? Right. 
And these people, the husband told to write, they didn't write themselves. Rather, what they did was they delegated to somebody else. And they delegated other witnesses to sign. Even though again it was written and signed and delivered to the wife. And this is what the husband wants. They delivered to her. They gave the get to the husband. And then they uh, and then the husband gave it to the wife. Nonetheless, the get is invalid. In order for it to get to be valid, the husband has to come to say to the sofa, sofa, you write the get. You ate him, sign the get. And here, what's the problem? Why and why does that seem to be an enormous problem in the Tzvat case? Because was it Tzvat? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to my <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I'm just so excited. This is such an exciting. Okay, well, I, I mean, I feel bad for the, but it's a, it, how, a lot of it's exciting to talk about. All right. Uh, all right. So um, it's <laughs> so uh, basically, why, why is this an enormous problem for the uh, for the spot get right? Because it seems very clearly that the husband needs to start. The process. And if the husband is not participating, how is the, pro- how is the process valid? Okay, let's go to source number uh, source number three. Okay, so without going through all the cases in the Mishnah, let's speak about. Uh, all right, you know, let's go. Let's go through the uh, the second line. Pikach shenasa shenasa pikachas. So many mentally competent, mentally competent man married a mentally competent woman is karsha. Okay, and if the wife became uh, a deaf mute, himratza yotzi. There can be a divorce in this case. In Rosh Hashanah, they can remain married. Nishtates, however, if she became uh, Nishtates, she became mentally incompetent. At this point, Lo Yotzi is forbidden to divorce her. Nischareish Hu, O Nishtate. However, if the husband became a deaf mute or Nishtate or became mentally incompetent, in this case, Eino Mosi Olamit. This is really the key Mishnah that's hugely relevant to our case. That's it. What does that seem to be saying? That once the husband becomes mentally incompetent, that, that's it. He can't, can't give a get. I know this from my practice. You know, various situations where, uh, where, uh, where a husband is becoming, uh, deteriorating mentally. And a lot of times, you know, it's a race. You have to make sure to try to, try to get to the husband so he should give a get when he's still mentally competent. And someone is, he has, if he's Alzheimer's, is he still, if, and, 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 and the wife wants to get, well, is he, is he competent? Is he not competent? So this is always a guiding, guiding uh, Mishnah for us and telling us that that's it. Once it becomes a shota, there's nothing you could do. So is there, uh, so it seems offhand, how in the world did the Tzvat, how did, how did the Tzvat Beitin grant again on behalf of the husband if the Mishnah seems to not allow this whatsoever? The Mishnah says straight out. Once the husband's a shoulder, he's mentally incompetent, game over, that's it. There's nothing you could nothing could do. Alright, so let's so offhand they just seem right, we're rooting for the spot painted, but offhand they seem to be have a, a Mishnaya said so totally against them. Husband didn't order it, shows a shota, he can't do anything, ain't no mosio lamit. What's what's happening over here? Okay, so uh, in order to be, to be able to explain what they where they're coming from. We need to uh, divide into two issues, and they um, basically it is two prompt. They make two arguments, and in halacha we have this idea of svek sveka, double down, that you put together two arguments. Even one, even if neither one is completely convincing, one is half convincing, the other is half convincing. You put the two halves together, you have a whole, and you can and you can come with an, a lenient ruling. So there are two prongs to this to this ruling, and let's let's we're gonna. Start with the first prime, and then go to the second prime. All right. So the first, the first one begins with this. Right. The argument to say that, well, had the wife known that this is what the is that uh, this is what her husband would become, she wouldn't have married him. All right. So let's see if there's such a basis for this. Let's say, oh, this is Gemara Baba Kama. Gemara Baba Kama speaks like this: Ayivama, Shenafa Lifne Lifne Mukashche, Tevik Belo Chalitza. A woman, uh, a woman's husband passed away. He didn't have children. So in this case, what should be done? What does the Chumash say? Yibo. If it's not going to be Yibo, there should be Chalitza. Okay. So she needs, uh, she needs Yibo. 
but the only brother who uh, who who's still who, who's able to who's alive is someone who is a mukashchen. Now, you can imagine, right? Mukashchen, someone who is afflicted with shchen with boils. Oh my goodness! So this is this is the uh, Gemara's example. The mukashchen. This is the most uh, undesirable husband imaginable. Okay, so she's uh, now she finds herself uh, disaster. Oh my goodness, she has to marry. Uh, she has to be married to this uh, Muka Shechem. Oh my goodness. So the Gemara suggests, well, maybe she'll say, oh, had I known this, I thought it looked like Kitchen Nasha. I never agreed to get into this marriage with the, with the possibility I'm going to be, have to be with this Muka Shechem. Oh no, oh no, Muka Shechem. So, uh, so, we, so we say, the Gemara gives an answer. Hasamanan Sadi Demenach Nech Demenach Nechala Bechaldu. Quite a quite a gemara in itself. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot to talk about. It's a good joke, but since I'm being filmed, I'm not going to uh, I'm not I'm not going to quote it. Uh, those of you private one, I'll tell you I'll tell you afterwards. The um, the mish, the the, uh, the gemara tells us well, a woman will be uh, will be satisfied with um, even the most not, not very complimentary things to say about us husbands, but a woman will be will be well. Some women, let's say the way of motion terms it, some women will be satisfied with any husband. So you can't presume that had she, uh, had she known that she would fall, that this would be her husband, she would never get married. No, because there are some women who would be satisfied even with a mukashkin because better, better one than none. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so says the Gemara. So it seems offhand to knock out this possibility to say, well, had I known I was going to get such an unfortunate husband, I never would have agreed. But, uh, so it seems offhand we don't have a mechanism which she can say, had I known such and such, she can get out of the marriage. Well, so ends the Gemara. But then, the, already the Gaonim and the Rishonim start dealing with a new, uh, a, a further development. What if the Yavam, and this was a common issue in the time of the Gaon and the Rishonim, what if the, the, the husband who, uh, the, so the, the brother-in-law, after the husband passed away, the only brother who's able to do Yibam is a Mumar. Anybody know what a Mumar is? A Mumar is somebody who had, was a Mishumad, someone had converted to another religion. And the problem is, is that, oh my goodness, Yibam? Why would she want to live with someone who does, is not practicing Judaism? And uh, worse than that is that uh, the big problem is is that if he'd be a mumar, then he's not going to be willing to do either yibum or chalitza. So she's in a, she's in a very big problem. So the Gaonim wanted to make the argument that well, a, a, a mumar is worse than a mukashchid. A mumar, the, the mukashchid is right. So so therefore the Gaonim said, okay, mukashchid, what would be all right? I have to be married to mukashchid. Okay, I'll be married to Mukashkin. She'd be she she accept the Mukashkin. But uh, but a better better Mukashkin than uh, than be alone. But a but but a Mumar, that's worse. So are the Gonin. Rashi said no. Rashi said that uh, the Mumar is still a Jew and the, and and, uh, and and a and a woman's gonna be acceptable to even anybody better than one than none, even if, that's, uh, even if that person is going to be a mumar, if he's going to be someone of another religion. It's quite, it's quite an opinion of, uh, of Rashi. Yes? So what happened to the first husband? Like, why could, you could very well imagine someone who would say, it's worth being married to the mumar now because they got to live in any good years with my first husband. Right. Or the same thing in our case. Would she really say, I wish I was never married to this person just because at the end of his life he becomes... Right, 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 right. I, I, I had 60 good years, and now, uh, yeah. right, right. I hear, I hear. That's, that's part of the problem with, uh, with saying, had I known, I never would have. Right, and you're going to see how this is going to play out in this spot case, although I end some of the criticism right now. Look what, uh, so what do we follow? Do we say that a woman can say, oh, had I known it was going to be a mumar, I never would have, I never would have married him. So the Mechaber says as follows. Uh-oh. Now she needs Yibum from a Mumar. Yesh Mishimah. There are those who permit him. If he was already, if he had converted out, if already by the t- at the time of the marriage. But you shouldn't rely on that opinion. Okay, so the Mechaber follows Rashi's opinion. 
But the Ramah adds as follows. The Ramah says, Miu, however, im over Let's say the woman remarried without Khalisa because she she loyal that shall yellow. She knows there was a that her that her that her uh, former husband had a brother. Oh no, there's a long lost brother who converted out of religion. So in this case, we will rely on the going in that what? Lotate. What does it mean, Lotate? Say that. She doesn't need to divorce the, the second husband. Okay, so that in that situation will rely on the on, on the opinion of uh, the Gaonim. Now here's the here's the key, here's our key point. We've gotten out of five C, the Radach, and this is going to be a cornerstone for uh, for the Tzfat decision. So the Radach says even Rashi would agree. Even to the following extreme situation, let's say the husband is he's got two strikes against him. He's a mumar, and he lives far away in a place where, remember this is pre-modern times, where a woman had no access. So to this, the, uh, the Radach says, even Rashi would agree. What kind of a husband? She can't reach, she has no access. He's a mumar. She definitely wouldn't have, have, have married had she known she's going to uh, get into a situation like this. This is not part of what she agreed to in getting married, and therefore, uh, you could say the marriage is, uh, is, is nullified retroactively. And therefore, she'd be permitted to remarry without, without, without Yibu, without Chalitza. Yes? So if she Rabbi has Nia. no access to the guy, <coughs> and she, she has no way to get to him, she's never met him, she's never going to meet him, right. what difference does it make whether he's a Mumar? He can okay. be a Chavon who cares? Right, she has no access. Right, right. And even she would have access. Who would want to have access to him anyway? Right. I guess. Right. The double whammy. Right. Here. What does it add? I hear. It. That's a good question. Okay. It's a good, very good question on the Radah. No, because you could always say that. Look, she doesn't have access. But if she really made an effort, she could. She could get access. Right. You made made a heroic effort. Right. But what? But obviously, the Moomer got to where he got, so she can get there also. But the she doesn't have easy access. But for this, for a, for a mumar, she's gonna she's gonna go out of her way. Heroic acts, no way. It's 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 totally no no one. It's such an extreme situation. She wouldn't agree to do this. Yes, Rabbi Clapp. I, I don't think I think the Rav's answer is that um, that the reason access matters is because she always hopes that she can get into the tshuva. Oh, <laughs> very good. That's right. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice argument for Rashi. That's right. Very good. And, uh, but if he's far away, then she's not going to be able she's to bring him back. With him. Right, that works well with the Rashi. That said that Rashi, Rashi upset with Chazal that, they didn't, that uh, Yaakov didn't let Dina marry Esau. If Dina would have turned Esau around. Right, so she can turn him around. Very good. Right, that's right. right. Very nice. That's, the, that's maybe, that's, that's, the, that's the idea here. That's right. I think it's in the Radach. What's that? I think that's in the Radach. Yeah. Oh, it's in the Radach itself. I think so. Okay, very good. Wouldn't it be more of a problem if the man would were doing a woman who were convert? Because this way, if she did marry him, the children would still be Jewish, whereas the other way around, I mean... Okay, what if the what, right we, that 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 case is discussed in Shulchan Aruch, but we're talking about when when about husbands that are uh, that are a little bit lost. That's what our that's what we're going to be speaking about here, and and let's go to number six now. Number six is already the uh, the, the big tshuva that uh, that they that that uh, the Tzvah pays in quotes, the Hartzvi. So who's, who's, who's the Hartzvi? Hartzvi is Hartzvi was written by anybody Hartzvi. by Rasvi Pesach Frank. Who's Rasvi Pesach Frank? Small, big, heavyweight, lightweight. What is it? Shifri Rabbi Av, Av Yushalayim, Rabasha Yushalayim, tremendously respected. I happen to know I did some training with Razam Chani Goldberg, who was the great current rabbi, who uh, supported this decision. And Razam Chani Goldberg, remember once, I once mentioned Razi Pesachran to Razam Chani Goldberg, and he said, oh, Rabasha Yushalayim. He had uh, tremendous respect, Razam Chani has tremendous respect for Razi Pesachran. So a sweet best of front, this is the case that he had. He had a case where a husband uh, wrote, uh, wrote a get for his wife, okay? And then the basin discovered that they made a mistake in the get. Oh, no. They, 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 they uh, transliterated his name improperly. Oh, no. What a 
disaster. Okay, so get him, get him to come in again. Oh, brother. It doesn't, doesn't work that way, usually. Or sometimes it does, but over here, you're not going to be able to get a second chance because the husband went, uh, became mentally incompetent. He's institutionalized. And there's, how are we going to get him to give a get? Oh, my goodness. So listen what Rasri Pesach Frank does. Now, he does it with two attacks, two prompts. First prompt, well, he tries to show, but what are you, you going to try to do? You're going to try to show that, that, that the mistake was not that egregious, and therefore the get would, the, the, you can argue the get is valid, and then he tried for another argument. He can say the argument that maybe she's not considered to be married to him, or whether marriage is nullified retroactively. Why? Because... Had she known that the husband was going to become uh, in- mentally incapacitated, then he, she never would have agreed to the marriage in the first place. Now, this is quite a leap from Rossi Pesach Frank. Why is it a leap? Because what is the Gemara case? The Gemara case is that she, it was a case of a Yava. Right? Rossi Pesach Frank says that even if the husband himself Develops a problem after the marriage. You could still argue. Oh, had I known, I never would have. I never would have. I, ne- I never would have agreed. Now that's that's astonishing. I mean, that's a bi- that's a very very big leap. I mean, I can imagine if somebody here along the line has bought a stock that they're not so happy with. Now, can you retroactively invalidate the purchase? Well, had I known it was gonna <laughs> it was gonna be a clunker, you know, I never would have. Uh, I never would have agreed. But here's Rasu Besach Frank. You know what? Let me just say, now, is the, now let me bring in, of course, Ra, the argument of, of, uh, of the Tzvat Petin, and then you can come and attack. Okay, good. So the... the okay. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Tzvat Petin then, of course, said that, here, you're dealing with a husband, right? In this case, he's... In this, he's been a perv- He's PBS for seven years. And doesn't look like any chance of, of his recovering. And there's no communication. He is nothing. Of, he does not act like a husband in any manner whatsoever. Had she known this, right? Using this argument of Rasu Pesach Frank, right? Of, apply, of applying this Gemara of a common in this direction. Had she known, would she have agreed to be married? No. Now, would you rely on just this alone? No. Rasu Pesach Frank. Se, argue, you know, says it's just one prong. This is a it's because it's just one, it's a possibility because you can make the argument that whoa, when can you invalidate a marriage only if it was what's make a toast that the husband was uh, concealed a, de- a, a very serious defect, and had she known that defect, she wouldn't have married. She wouldn't have married in the first place. But a, a defect that develops after the marriage that already is a an, an enormous uh, leap. And that's the one that Rosu Pesach Frank real Rosu Pesach Frank uses it as old Raisi as a sniff, as a component in, in the in the ruling to permit the woman to be married, but not as the sole argument. Okay, and the same thing with Scott. They use this as prong number one in their argument. Okay, now here we go. All right, uh, let's go in this direction. Yes. Um, if I understood you correctly, you were saying that the case of a yavam is more simple to say mechatos uh, than the case of the husband developing the illness. Okay. I would have thought it's the opposite because the yavam is a subsequent. Right, right, right. right, right. It's a couple might be irrelevant. Right, that's right. And in terms of it being with the husband after marriage ends, it's right. actually only necessary to say that it's mechatos because the marriage is still valid. To me, it's on the tzad that she's allahically married to this guy who became uh, mentally right. incapacitated that we need to say it was not close. If we consider this as being after the marriage... Well, Rasul Pesach Ram would agree with, you, with, with, with the first point that you're making. You know, that, uh, that, by, that if it applies by Yibum, right? So, which is, right? So Kava Karma to the husband himself, right? Okay. One could argue, you know, you, with, with, uh, we get married, you're taking the person for better or for worse. Not our language, but uh, and, and but uh, and okay, it became worse. It's the risk you take. You know, you buy you buy you buy you buy stock. It may be for better or for worse. You buy you you're taking a risk, and there's uh, and it didn't it didn't work out. But one can argue by Khalid is the opposite. That okay, this this is not part of my my bargain. My bargain is with him. You know, this with the husband, not with not not not, not with uh, the brother-in-law. Okay, that's that's the way the argument you can make the other way. Okay? Yes. 
How does Rashi piss off Frank fit with the Mishnah Yivamo at the end, which specifically talks about Ashot and says that Ainu Motzi Olamis, which is more or less the same case that he's dealing with? So Rashi piss off Frank. Maybe we'll say could argue. Good question. Rashi piss off. Okay, the he doesn't grapple with it. This is a short shuva. He doesn't grapple with it. Rashi piss off. Uh, but but the Tzvat Beitin grapples with it. The Tzvat Beitin will say that our case is the case with the PV, with PBS. First of all, in the time of the Mishnah, you didn't have PBS. You, you, you just didn't have the technology for a person to be in a permanent veg- vegetative state. People like this would die in short order. So it's only a modern phenomenon. That's why the Mishnah doesn't address it. Frank with the case it. of actual shota. Uh, and Frank presumably would say, I'll argue for him, that he can't give a get, ain't no motzi. But can you make the argument that the, that the, that the wife... Uh, can't, he can't give a get himself. But perhaps you make an argument that the wife can get out of the marriage by that uh, through, uh, through a different net mechanism. The language is you know, by saying, saying you had I known, I never would have. Was, I, I hear you. You're, mm-hmm. you're right. I, I, I hear you. But you can, but, but, the, but the Svat Beitin, now even if you don't accept the Svat so Pesach's argument, nonetheless, the Svat Beitin's argument has room mm-hmm. because you have it's they, they specifically distinguish between our case and your and your um, standard shota. Uh-huh. Your standard shota is somebody who uh, who who, um, who who it's not as extreme. This is really extreme. This is a totally uh, this person is just is just is just lying there, a totally totally dysfunctional person mm-hmm. and, and zero functioning person. It's an extreme. That uh, that that uh, you didn't have the time of the Mishnah, that kind of a situation, you could say, well, there is there's possibly a way out. Okay, all right, yes. Um, how can, okay. What if they make a mistake? How do you make sure he's really in a permanent state? He wakes up, and they have a bunch of mundane. You have okay. So that's what I want to emphasize. Okay, okay, I, I, I hear you, but that's why the basin and Svan, they were misuna b'din. They didn't rush into this. They didn't say it in, in five seconds. Right. Even when they were presented with the case, they didn't say, "Okay, let's let's uh, tomorrow let's uh, let, let's resolve this." They were they were very deliberate. It's still like a mistake. Yeah. Well, after seven years, okay, look, and and dying. Lef- okay, I hear that's an argument to make. Yeah, I know that one, argument has been made against. Let's say it's one to ten thousand times. That was a Sternbach's argument. You'll have three or four months there. You'll have. Okay, but the question is, I think okay. But first of all, the best medical knowledge is saying it's impossible. I don't think there's been any case where someone is in PBS where well, they've... the definition uh, of PBS is they don't wake up. They wake up, it wasn't PBS. So, if you know that... Okay. But look, all right, okay. All right. Eilich of Mashi and of Rose. You know, he... I, you know, Rosh Tormach, that's part of his... Uh, of his criticism of the Psak bit. But on, for, you could say for the Svat Beitin that look, there you rely on the medical opinion, and that's it. Allah allows you to rely on medical opinion that you can uh, eat on Yom Kippur. So, to hear the medical opinion saying there's no chance, and seven years is, a, you know, is, is not five seconds. So, so. The, he's not a man anymore because the, the, the definition of man is a rational animal. So, if well, that's Aristotle's definition. Yeah. I, don't know that's, uh, I don't know if that's our definition. Oh, but, uh, okay, I even have a hand up and then we'll come back. We'll come. Yes? So what is the statute of limitations of Mekah Tos when it comes to Yisrael? Okay, so uh, one of the, okay. Usually, y- y- okay, that's a, that's a smart question. Okay, uh, so usually what's, well, the way I say Rav Moshe, in, in, in various situations, where they say Mekah Tos, the, the statute of limitations is very limited. When the wife would find out that the husband, let's say, was, um, here, let's start with one case. The husband was institutionalized for many years. Uh, he, uh, in, 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 in a, in a, in a uh, psychological asylum, and he was, uh, she never, he didn't reveal this to the wife for the marriage. So when she discovers this, she needs to leave right away. If she doesn't, then you could make the argument, suffer of a kibla that she that that she consented. You see, she even when she found out, she remained. So there's really a narrow window. Once she finds out that that defect, she has to uh, leave right away. But here, this is uh, and again, this is the big chiddush is you could, that you're saying mekachtos 
for a mom that developed long after the marriage took place. This accident took place five years after the marriage. So it, it, is, a, it is a chiddush, but, there's a, there's a, 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 but he does quote, there's a basis for it in the, in the, in the tshuvot of Varus Hu Pesach Fra. But I don't think in this sort of a case where uh, there, there's no, there, I don't think there's any statute of limitations. It can, because when can he, uh, well, what, could, what was she supposed to do? And it, when she discovers it, so would she leave? Well, she's not leaving. He's in the high, He's just lives permanently in the hospital. Okay, he can't live. Uh, he can't live with not being in the hospital. Okay, I just lay, I lay as I had my hand up. Okay, <laughs> I'll do it in the order of the hands. Yes, go ahead. Um, so the the thing that I don't know what Yehuda was saying before though is that they didn't treat him like he was dead, right? Like it's not like oh we we treated him like he was dead. And we told the wife that she could go marry someone else, and and then and then you have and then you have the normal case of. Uh, of mom's area for children, like they, they did a whole like get process. Oh, okay. Well, that's the second prompt. We're still we're still working on the fir- on the viability of the first prompt. In order okay. for the the ruling of the swap to be valid, oh, you, you have to you, 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 you need a definite maybe for yeah. <laughs> you need two definite maybes. The two definite maybes you combine together and you have a uh, and you have a ruling. Okay, we have to we're, we're trying to uh, you know we're saying oh no maybe you don't even have a definite maybe. Yes, and then and I guess then my, my question is similar to, to Leia's, but in the just glancing at the chuba here, the it seems like the main argument he makes is that everyone recognizes that this is this man's specific this this specific person's get, and he brings precedent to say that this and that when that happens, when people recognize that this get belongs to so and so, that that means that it's a get culture, and then. The, uh, in, the ha- in the heart suite. I have it. Yeah. I have it up in the Oh, I'm sorry. Not, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Not, not, uh, not, not, not the, oh, yeah, not, not, not my shortened version here. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and then the, it, it seems like the editor just took this the, this quote that you have here just from another place. He says, Right, right, right. And that's, and, and that's yeah, the most of the tshuva there, he tries to say that the get is valid. Right. So it doesn't seem like he, like, it, if the, I, I, I assume that in the, in the get they brought you know, other chuvot that brought this argument, but like, if this is the one argument that they're basing themselves on, if this is the one shoot that they're basing themselves on, uh, it, it seems like kind of a flimsy argument based on precedent. Okay. Uh, I, I, I hear I, I hear you. Oh. Okay. Oh, you mean that Rav Sweet Pesach Pran? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, Rav Sweet Pesach uses it a Pran, and Tzvai uses it as a Pran. No, but I'm saying, if, if they're using it and they're saying, look, Rav Sweet Pesach Pran used this as, a, as, as, as a his prom. argument, right. right, then it just seems like it seems like if this is the if this is the one place where they found this argument being used, then it doesn't seem like such a strong argument. Why? 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 Because it's used as a secondary argument and right. as an editor's addition to the arg- to the to his uh, I see. Okay, and it's also all right. And uh, that, that also there was a posthumously uh, published volume right. as well. Okay. All right, the editor. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, in terms of what Yehuda was asking about, well, what if he wakes up? So, it seems to me we're making an and I'm to know about the psychology of this woman at the moment when she got married. Right. And if it would turn out that oh, right. most women, right. if you said, would you be willing to be married to somebody who there's only a 1 in 10,000 chance will right. ever be alive again? That's right. And women would say, no, why would I want to do that? Right, that's right. Then that, that should be, it does, he doesn't have to be, right. not, the doctors don't have to be right for this to be a horrible enough situation right. that no one would want to be in. Right, okay. Good. One thing I just realized, that's a good point, good, good defense of uh, Tzvat. And uh, one, 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 one point to just that I, uh, that I realized about, about, about uh, Rotsi Pesach's. Now, okay, I hear you that, that Rotsi Pesach's argument is, uh, you can argue, is Rotsi Pesach is flimsy. But remember, the Tzvat case is, is, a, is, a, is, is more of an extreme. PBS as opposed to someone who's a, uh, who's, who is mentally ill. And maybe he could, maybe he could recover. Oh, There's a saying, chance. So you're saying that Rav Pesach Frank in this case would have used this as the main argument, and not as a well, argument again, this, but this is all. It's he's, he's using two secondary arguments. Right. But I'm just saying the Tzvat case is stronger than the Rav Pesach. Okay. So, okay, all right. Now, but we ready for the second prompt? Oh, okay. All right. Who should? Okay, Rabbi Clavin, Rabbi Berman. Yeah, I, I, I love saying that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not being able to call up this. I just call up Judah, but see, it's not only Rav Pesach Frank. There is a, there is a, um, there's a, it starts, there's a, Radaf, there's, it starts with, Mar, with the Maram about Umar, it goes to the Radaf, it goes from Radaf to the Femme Right. And so there actually is a, 
That's if that's a nagid back to the end of a... Right, of right. He's an extension of the Radach. That's right. Because right. Radach also speaking about an issue that came about after the marriage. That's, that's right. right. And it goes to the Chudam Shulach. It goes to the Chudam Shulach in between. So it's not, it's not quite just Okay, right, okay. You're, you're, okay, that, that's a very important point to make. Okay, this idea that a, a, a defect that develops after marriage, you can use the way to, to disqualify the, uh, the original marriage, that's, uh, that has a basis in the Radach, which is quoted now the Radach. Also, I want to emphasize this, is cited in the Bar Hetev, you notice it appears on the pages of the Shulchan Aruch. So it, it's a mainstream view. Okay, Rabbi. Uh, echo of the same question. Same okay. idea, genetic type up. Is there a distinction between a case where someone, uh, would more people be comfortable saying that Nishtagea is, is grounds for some sort of divorce if the person's Shiga'on comes from a source that was already in existence when they got married? Uh, and those, so God forbid, there's a horrible car no. accident that's very different from they already had some uh, sort of genetic something going on that was already going to lead no. to. Oh, uh, uh, okay. And had she known that he had, okay, so you can make the argument that Shiga'on in a certain way is stronger than the car accident. Right. Because the Shiga'on is something that's a pre-existing condition that Sorry. she wasn't aware of. And had she known, okay, because it was genetically generated. Okay. Are more, are more people going to be comfortable? Aha, uh -huh. interesting. It's a good argument. Okay, good. All right, now let's go to the second problem. Okay, so uh, source, number, uh, source, source number seven. Okay, so we just said that the Shota, the Shota is, in, is incompetent. He can't act. So, all right, so what's, what's, Tzvat, what's the Tzvat argument? The Tzvat argument is that, you can, is that who can act for him? He can't act alone, but he can't. But, but who can act for him? Dayton can act for him. Whoa, where do we have such a concept? Sure we have a concept. Listen to this. Where do we have a concept that Dayton can act on behalf of someone that is mentally incompetent? So this is something that, that's masa yom, something that's not uncommon at all. Based in converting a, a minor. Minor doesn't have any consent. Certainly a baby. I was involved with that. I'm sure Rabbi Clapper is, uh, is very, 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 very have you done it. Right, Rabbi Mer? Yeah. You're a ba a based in for conversion of a, of a baby. Now that baby is, does, not, uh, does not have much of, much of dust. Screams a lot, but it doesn't have, uh, doesn't have, <laughs> but it doesn't, it eats a lot, but it doesn't, uh, but does not have, uh, have much, have much dots, right? And yet, well, how can Basin do this? Because we have a concept of, a very important concept, that's going to be the key concept for the next 15 minutes. Zochin la'adam shalobafana, okay? So let's say, okay, zochin la'adam shalobafana, you can acquire something, on behalf of somebody else, you can confer a benefit, even if that person is not aware of it, and even if that person is mentally incompetent, as long as it is a schut. It works. Okay. Now, source number eight. Let's turn the page. Tosus jumps on this. Whoa! How does the chia work? How does the idea of conferring a benefit, how does it work? It works through presumptive agency that the one who acquires it on behalf of somebody else acts as a presumed agent. But you can only act as an agent of somebody who, if that person is mentally competent, a cotton can't make a sh it's not mentally competent, they can't make a shliach. Although ain't shliach a cotton. So Tosu say, then no, there's an exception. If it's a schus gomor, is it an absolute schus based, based in, or even an individual can act on behalf of somebody even if that person is mentally incompetent. As long as it is a schus gomor, as long as it is clear benefit, clear, undisputed, no downside whatsoever. Okay? Now you'll say, where do we see that we have such a concept that it's not just to a katan, but to a shodah? What's in the Shulchan Aruch? Shulchan Aruch says, HaShodah Nizokal is a lot smaller here. Shodah can't acquire anything, but Mizakal is Shodah, you acquire something on behalf of a shodah. Aide ben it works. It works. Okay? Now, we, we, have, we, we, have, we have this idea in the Chumash Zach in Adam Shlobofana. Is that how did you apportion Tanakh? How did you apportion shares in Eretz Yisrael? Didn't give it out to every individual. The representative of each Sheva, Nasi Achad, they acquired land on behalf of all the members of the Shevet. 
So you have this concept, Zohar and so far, I mean, who do they acquire for all the members? Some of the members are minors. Some of them are also mentally incompetent. So we see Zohar and so far, I believe that Bastin can add leadership, can act on behalf of, of people who are incompetent. Very clear. All right, but now here comes, here comes trouble. Let's go to source number uh, 11 after we... Uh, this case, our case is a chokam. There's no advantage to him from a purely selfish point of view. If he wakes up and slight chance, I have a wife, and now he won't. It's literally purely chokam. He's not waking up. Okay, that's purely right. selfish. I mean, he doesn't wake up. He's not waking up. There's no advantage at all. Why is he okay, that's, 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 that's where Sternbach's argument against. But hold on. Not bad at all. Waking up to an extraordinarily angry wife. Pretty bad idea. Okay, but it's hard to argue. Exclude gum or it's hard to argue. You could argue maybe it's exclude exclude gum or. Okay, all right, that's our Sternbach's argument. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, let's take a look, uh, let's, let's, let's continue. So number, uh, number 11, right, it's a, it's, it's a fair point, but hold on, let's, let's, let's bear this all in mind. Okay, for, first of all, we got an obstacle. Whoa, what do we say here? You can acquire something on behalf of somebody else. What is the base and acquire on behalf of the child? Jewish identity on behalf of the child. Whoa, what's going on over here? When the basin, the Tzvat basin acted on behalf of the husband, what are, they, what are they doing? They are taking away, right? Taking away a wife. Ooh, what does the Gemara say? Zachin le'adam. Not what? Not Zachin me'adam. Ooh, where do you have such a concept that Zachin me'adam? You could take something away. Whoever, whoever said such a thing. Well, turns out that is a big machlok, yes? And the Ksos and the Kevz of Mishnah argues that. No, Zachin le'adam, not me'adam. And there's a big finish you can act without anybody's consent, only if you're giving something. You can't take away. This is a huge, huge argument. Anyone who's learned in, its, you know, in, 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 in yeshiva, it comes up somewhere along the line. Zachin le'adam, me'adam, right? It's, it's a huge celebrated machloket. Well, the question is, what do we rule like? So, let's take a look at the Shulchan Let's take a look at number 12. This is Ramah. Okay. We take Kal. Right? We're familiar with that. That if you have a certain amount of dough that you're making, you're supposed to take kala. You're supposed to separate kala. Okay? So this, this, the rule is, source number 12 says, You can't take kala without permission. All right? Very simple. However, the, uh, the Rama adds, Mihu, however, what happens if you know it's a schus of the pot? What if you know... Then it needs it because it can be done now. It can't be done later. The, the the dough is about to be ruined. If you do it now, you can take challah. If you if, if later, if you delay, you can't. It's not going to work. What does what does the, what does the Rama say? Mutalito challah below, below Rishusa. You can take challah from the guy's bread without his permission. If that's the only opportunity to do so, why? What is, how does Rama uh, defend this? Because the basis is zachin ladam shlobafana. Right? So what does this? So what does this prove? The Ramah, the Allah's authority for Ashkenazic Jews. That what that? What are you doing in this case? Does it prove Zachin Me'adam as well? Of course. What are you doing? You're taking away someone's challah. You're taking away part of part of his dough. So prove Zachin Me'adam Shalom B'fanav. Okay, I see some skeptics. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, some of the, some of the skeptics are already raising their hands. Okay. Mm, who's going to be the easiest question for us? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pick can poison, that, you know. Can I just say that it is an example of Zachim Lad and Shalafanov, and we're giving him a mitzvah, and that's, it's not, like, we're not taking anything substantive away from him. In fact, we're giving him a mitzvah. Which sure, he's taking some of his dough. I know, but he would, he, he doesn't mind that. He minds that he's getting the mitzvah. Even though, like, Right, you're giving him that, you're giving, okay, you're giving him a, a, a mitzvah, you're, you're benefiting him, sure, it only works with the benefit, what's so, the benefit, the spiritual benefit, and, but in the process, what did you do, in order to do that, you had to take something away. But for the, for the, for, for this man in the coma, then, there, there's no, there's no, there's no side benefit that he gets from it, there's, it's just, it's just taking something okay, away. Okay, so the yeah. argument that, that Scott Baton Endorsed by Rav Dichovsky, one of the great Dayanim a lot today, is that it is a schus. What's a schus? Is he does a kindness for his wife. And everybody needs schus. And Rav Dichovsky quotes that you need, uh, and, and you know, you all are familiar with this, that there's this concept that even Nesim, if someone's not alive, needs schuyot. That's why we do what? That's why in Yizkar we donate, we give tzedakah, right? 
What's the idea? Are you giving on behalf of the Mason? So people who pass away, that they're, they're neshama shavuschos. So too, this guy, so his neshama, the husband who's in the PVS state, you're giving him the, you're giving him the spiritual schos, that he's not, that he's releasing his wife from, a, uh, from, a, from some, such a terrible situation. No, okay, and any, any, any normal husband doesn't want his wife to be, uh, doesn't want his wife to be uh, an aguna, you know? So, um, okay. Yes? Maybe you can argue that beforehand the guy just has a worthless lump of dough, but now that you're taking away a piece of chal, you're actually giving him dough. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Beforehand it's worth zero, and now Well, actually dough. the case was that they, 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 uh, the dough was going to be ruined. So you're just, give, you're just giving him the opportunity to fulfill the mitzvah of, of chal before the dough is ruined. So oh, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing... Yeah, then it's going to be the dough, is, the dough is gone. All you just did is you get an opportunity to, for him to fulfill a mitzvah. So then either way, then... Oh, because it wouldn't have lost, because it would have... Okay, but in the moment... Cause it so in the moment he had in kosher, the moment, so in the moment been, you gave him a piece of kosher dough. In the moment he had dough that, was, that, was, that he couldn't do anything with, and now you've given him a piece of kosher dough for a second. Uh-huh, because it was tevel. And now you gave him... Well, the result was... What, but the result was kosher dough for a second, right. right? But how did you do that? What's your means? Your means was man. But mean who to... cares? You didn't take anything of value. All right, right, let me give a case that you won't be able to argue with. Here. <laughs> Shulchan Aruch. <laughs> I hear you. Shulchan Aruch says like this. Okay, let's say you uh, you have somebody's comments. And it's Erev Pesach. And oh, this guy is not coming back. And it's about to be uh, the fifth hour when the comments are going to be all It's coming close, coming close. Quickly, what did you do? Sell the, sell the chametz to, to a non-Jew before it becomes valueless. So are you allowed to do that? Shulchan Aruch says yes. Shulchan Aruch says you can sell somebody's chametz before Shacham, right before the fifth hour on Erev Pesach. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're taking, you're benefiting, you're certainly benefiting that chametz owner, but what you're doing with, uh, and, and uh, but what the, the process is, you're taking away. You're, you're selling somebody else's property. But if you're selling it, so assume, presumably you're breaking even, like assuming you're, you're making money. Of course it's, so it's again, you're benefiting the guy because no, if you didn't sell it, it would be worth not, zero. not coming any losses because, because he, has, he has some item. And no, I, okay, so let me explain what the problem with Zach and Me'adam, <coughs> right? Of course, the only way you could possibly say Zach and Me'adam, it has to be his chus. Right. That's a benefit. You're conferring a benefit, but the argument that Ksos makes is no. The benefit has the process can't be can't even be involved taking away. But we see from the chametz and the chal cases that even if the process involves taking away, right, you could still you still uh, you still are empowered. The halacha assumes that people want you to act in their best interest. You can act in the best interest of, of somebody else and take something away, and we do this. We do, I'll get here, here, I, I quoted you from, I quoted over here, I'm running out of time, so I just want to go quickly, I'll just give an example. Uh, chametz, right? It's in Shulchan Aruch, but uh, Rav, uh, for, uh, to sell chametz without somebody's, without somebody's consent. Rav Kook not selling land in Eretz Yisrael by Pruzbul, the Shevet Levi, source 16. But I wanted to uh, just give you one case, just give us a, just give us a, 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 a sense of, of where this can come up. One of my, one of my students, I have a student of Shuva. His parents are not observant. His parents would bring every year when they go to visit him, they go to visit to Israel, they bring them oatmeal. They love American, these kids love American oatmeal, so they bring huge boxes of oatmeal. The problem is they're going to be visiting right after Pesach, and they brought that oatmeal. They told them, oh, in March, oh, we bought all the oatmeal already. Oh, no, that oatmeal is, <laughs> they're owning that oatmeal over Pesach. And then, yeah, so they're going to bring them after Pesach, this Pesach that Chomets is also to do. So he, so he called me before Pesach, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So what did I do? I sold the Chomets for the parents, right? Without their knowledge, right? That's, <laughs> that's called what? Zachen me Adam Shabbat. I sold somebody else's Chomets. I sold somebody else's Chomets, right? But it's for their benefit. What's the benefit? What benefit do they get? Now their grandchildren can eat their, can eat their own meal. And the grand, nothing happier for, nothing, nothing uh, makes a grandparent happier than feeding the grandchildren. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, know, that's the biggest host of the world. Yes? But if these people eat something from Pesach, yes. then aren't they stealing now? Like, they were doing this for Karis, but now they're also stealing. I just saw the, uh, no, 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 no. Like <laughs> no? I only sold the, the oatmeal. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. Got it. <laughs> 
So, uh... You win. Yeah, they, <laughs> they wouldn't eat all that oatmeal. That's a, all right? Now, good thing I thought of that. All right, otherwise, I would have been in big trouble. All right, so where do you see that such a case? Like, get, all right. Didn't we say, and this is what we're going to close with, didn't we say in source number two, whoa, 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 go back to source number two, and get his butt down and love, so husband says, so far, right again, hate him, sign again. Oh, my goodness. How in the world, where do we see concept that the basin can write a get for somebody else? Well, lo and behold, okay, you do have cases. Let's just develop it. Case in Chai for 1955. Uh-oh. This is, uh, the, there was a, a shliach that was appointed by a husband to deliver a get. I'll just make it simple. In Haifa, and he was the standard shliach. He was the shliach that all the again that had to be delivered in the Haifa area, right? Everyone from out the world had wives who were, were, in, were in Haifa that needed to get delivered, including wives who were husbands were caught behind the Iron Curtain, and somehow they managed to get, a get, to get, to get into the rush, to get a get from him. And then the husband's appointed this guy to be the shaliyah, to deliver the get. And then what happened to the poor guy? The poor shaliyah. The poor shaliyah died. I vey, the poor shaliyah died and he's a shaliyah to deliver a get to dozens of women. Oh no, they're like, what a disaster, right? So there's a lot of discuss about this. The bottom line is, we've heard Sargon.